Felix here. Good evening from Hong Kong. Good morning to you, most likely. Thanks for joining us. Uh, you can see here on the screen, we've got lots of excitement to talk about. We've got the Neo Dilution, and I'm going to tell you my views why I think this isn't a bad thing if you haven't seen my video on that yet. Uh, we're going to talk about more chip shortage pain. Sadly, there's an article out just in Malaysia. We're going to talk about Tesla's Model 2. It'll be made in China, by the way. We're also talking about Neo Robo Taxis job opening numbers out just, or I think literally this second and what that means for inflation and therefore for tech stocks. Coinbase is getting sued by the SEC. Tesla had great delivery numbers in China in, in uh, August. PayPal is rallying this morning because they bought a Japanese company. And Alex Karp, really interesting interview yesterday. If you missed it, uh, I literally am the only guy who put it up on YouTube. So it's an exclusive here. Make sure you check it out. Uh, really interesting. He speaks German fluently. And um, I'm going to tell you also how you can turn $360 a month into a million bucks. So that's uh, sort of the, the game plan here. As always, bear in mind, this is not investment advice. This is just for entertainment. Be smart. Check your own facts. And if you want to know how you check your own facts. I teach you that in the master stocks. I teach you how you can build long-term wealth through stock investing. And if you want to earn passive income with investing in stocks, then don't do it with stocks, do it with options. And again, that's what I teach you there. So take advantage of the 29% off coupon study buddy. Uh, that also means your buddy gets free lifetime access to the same course. So join up before the end of the week, before it expires. And let's get straight into it. What's the Neo uh, ADS issue all about? About. Well, 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 I have put a video out on this, but I'm going to take you through just the core numbers here in case you've missed it, you've just woken up and, and you want to know what it's all about. So they're issuing $2 billion in shares here. That's it. Now, NEO has a market cap of $66.5 billion. So we're going to divide the $2 billion by $66 billion, and that gives us 3% dilution, essentially. That's pretty much it. You can also look at it in a slightly different way and take into account the float. Now, what's the float? Um, the float is not ice cream and Coca-Cola, sadly. It's the amount of shares that are actually tradable because some are locked up or held by insiders or Neo Trust or whatever. So there are 81% um, of all the shares of Neo outstanding are actually freely tradable, which coincidentally is exactly the same percentage that Tesla has. And if you then take that, so that means there are 1.3 odd billion shares that are actually trading. So if you take 50 million shares. And how do I get to 50 million? Well, I take my 2 billion and I divide it by $40 because that's more or less the share price at the moment. So then we get to 3.7% dilution. Now still, is this the end of the world? Does this mean the uh, mar market's going to crash? Is it going to tank? Well, it might go, go down the day today a bit. Uh, if it does, we would expect sort of 3 to 3.7% uh, the share price going down. But is that a rational thing? Think about it for a moment. Neo is getting two billion dollars in cash, which means they have two billion US dollars more in assets. So you own slightly less of Neo, but Neo is worth slightly more. So don't the two kind of offset each other? I think they do, provided you think Neo is going to do something sensible with that money and they're going to invest it into something that's going to turn those two billion into even more money. Then I actually think this is not an issue at all. And I did put out this chart here. Let me just see where it is on the Discord earlier. Where did I put it? Where did I put it? I put it somewhere. Uh, here it is. Um, this lovely chart I put out, which basically shows you the amount of dilution we had in previous quarters. So in 2020, we had the last two quarters of the year, we had 17% dilution in each quarter. So a massive dilution, 9% dilution um, in the last quarter of that year and the share price went up in the first two quarters. So it doesn't necessarily mean, you know, the end is near and, and we should all start digging holes and filling it with, uh, you know, uh, vegan sardines and ammunition and gold bars. It, it's just one of those things. Growth stocks do it. Um, Tesla used to do it all the time. It just is a sensible thing to do to raise money when you don't need it. And that's exactly when you should be raising money because you can get it easily. When you need it, you have a problem. So... 
the other aspect to this is, of course, and somebody just asked if, um, if we're going to see some more um, dilution. Yes, we will. So this is basically all New York. And I was a little surprised by this because we were expecting a Hong Kong IPO in October. So the Hong Kong IPO, if I put that over here, the Hong Kong IPO is rumored to be sort of 5 to 7% dilution. So that is in addition to what we're seeing here in New York. So we're going to get sort of 8 to 10% dilution um, or thereabouts. That is more or less the same that what we had in Q4 last year. It's about half what we had in Q3 and half of what we had in Q2 last year. So it's not massive. In fact, they haven't really diluted much this year. Uh, and... Um, it just means they're going to be sitting on a great big stockpile of cash. It means they can issue more models, they can expand faster, they can roll out infrastructure faster. So I think it's sort of expected. I just didn't expect to see it in New York. I expected to see it in Hong Kong. But it might just be that the Hong Kong IPO is taking a little bit longer due to those neo trust user issues. Now, some very smart people uh, of you uh, put some comments out on the video I've done on put out on this uh, three hours ago and they said well what if the SEC stops it and you're completely right the SEC has the power to uh, because that um, order they put out about essentially ADSs um, not being allowed to issue equity on in on US exchanges is in fact in place now there is a massive massive um 90 page document written by lawyers with this which is just all disclaimers and boring stuff and then there is another 192 page amendment to the perspective out here and i could count at least half a dozen really major american law firms all over this we also have um uh, Credit Suisse on this, Morgan Stanley, Goldman Sachs, and, and, and Nomura, and so on. So I, I imagine the lawyers have dotted all the I's and, and checked all the T's three or four or five or ten times. So I suspect this is going to be all right. I, I don't think there is an issue here, and I'm sure they've put in all the stuff that's needed uh, for, for the SEC to sign this off. Now, I say I'm sure... I, I have confidence in, uh, in in the kind of law firms out there they've got um, working for them, like Scadden Arps, for example. So I, I doubt that's going to be an issue. If it would be an issue, it'd be a massive one, of course, but I, I sort of don't see that um, coming. Um, CH, uh, welcome. You're saying I'll take long-term prosperity and value increase. I mean, that's just the game of growth stocks, isn't it? They raise money, they invest it, and they give us high returns. At, at least that's the theory that we are investing for. So that's kind of that in a nutshell. And actually, here is the chart. I can zoom in again a little bit for you to see past dilution. So uh, this is Q2 uh, 2020. We saw 70% dilution and the chart the stock price went up substantially. Same in Q3. We got another 17% dilution. So that's still the stock price went up very tremendously. And then in Q4, yes, it is true. The stock price uh, went down up here uh, this, and there was 9% dilution. But I don't think it was the dilution that caused that. I think that was just the, uh, the market overall correcting a bit. And uh, since Q1, we've had very little dilution. So this is just sort of... Uh, yeah, more of more of what's what's expected. And are we going to get more dilution? Are we going to get more of this? Very, very likely, I think. I think just the fact that they are launching two sedans next year, maybe another car. Uh, but that's the rumor, right? We are rumoring this S this SUV coming out. Sorry, not SUV, MPV, this sort of Toyota Alpha type people carrier, which could be very profitable. It just means more money is going to be required. And as long as they in, keep improving their gross margins and they keep improving their revenues and we might actually get into profitability soon that i think is is, is still not a bad story uh, origin is saying yeah there is a lot of confusion about this so it's an at the market offering and that basically just means they can sell these shares over a time period at market prices so they are just going to sell this into the market essentially Via, via the big banks. Uh, so it's not sort of like saying today we place 2 billion with Goldman Sachs and bam, it's done. 
it's just, it's going to be a bit staggered. They're not going to do this in one day because still 50 million shares is at least a day's trading volume. So in one day, the market wouldn't normally absorb this. So they're going to stagger this a bit. But if you think about it, it's NEO selling shares. NEO cannot hold NEO shares, right? It can't own shares in itself. If it was William Lee selling shares as an insider, then yes, it would be existing shares, but it's NEO selling shares to raise money for NEO. So therefore, it's diluted. And we also had that conversation on our Discord community earlier, uh, which is exactly what what, what I, I, I sort of appreciate your question here. Is um, and if you look at page ninety of the um, amended prospectus they just filed, it's all about dilution, and it goes through um, how they this is dilution, and there could be further dilution when they when they do issue more shares. So uh, I, yes, I do think this is dilutive. Do you hold through the dilution or sell and buy the dip, says Nathan? I, I personally am too lazy to sell things or, or for, for such small events. It's not a major item. And quite frankly, it's it's priced in by now, right? It, it, it just is. So it's not like we, we knew this in advance. Um, and yes, I would expect it to be down somewhat in pre-market. Let me have a look here. Live. This is the live ticker. Let's see. Neo, 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 Neo. Where's Neo? little black symbol. Here it is. 2.3% down at the moment pre-market. Uh, that's not bad. I, I would expect that might decline a little bit because th the early morning is typically retail investors who are freaking out a little bit about a headline that they might not 100% fully appreciate. And it's really under difficult to understand the language that's put out, right? I mean, really, uh, they should there should be a reform of the language that's meant to be used in these announcements so it's a bit clearer to everybody, especially to retail investors like, like you and me. So um, maybe that's going to come. Um, uh, Pan is saying the seven dilution percentage is large. So this dilution right here right now is 3%. So I was adding on top of that the... Hong Kong IPO, that's rumored to take place in October, but we still haven't got any details on, on a real date there. Um, Genie X, you're completely right. Neo targets annual production of 600,000 units by end of 2022. That is something we should probably add to our list here. Uh, that is very, very much a good news story here. So uh, Neo 2022 capacity 600 thousand cars and that's that's major now you're not going to build that kind of capacity unless you expect to fill that capacity not not likely in 2022 but in 2023 so yes i do think that's good news um so let's talk about a couple of other things here that's related so somebody very lovely on our discord group uh, just shared this uh, with me literally just before the call it's a yahoo news article which I'll pull up for you here. And it basically says, chip supply faces new crunch as Malaysia plants shut for a week. So the Malaysian semiconductor company Unisem is going to shut for seven days after three employees recently died of COVID. Now, the disappointing neo numbers we had for last month were because of a Malaysian semiconductor company. Is it the same one? Thankfully not. So Unisem is the one mentioned here. And I actually went back and watched my own video, which is a strange thing to do, that I put out on the 3rd of September. Uh, and in there, I could see my screenshot and it's ST um, Semiconductors. That is actually the supplier to Bosch. So this is potentially not affecting, um, but it also is because Unisem supplies... ST microelectronics. So this is potentially bad news for new deliveries in September uh, or October, depending on how long the lead time is there. So you can see here, Unisem supply ST microelectronics, ST microelectronics supply Bosch, uh, Bosch supply Neo, um, and also Tesla and Toyota and so on. So it's a bit of a bit of a long chain of supply chain there. But this is a little bit concerning. If you lose a whole week's production, you might therefore not be able to get your hands on those chips. So uh, it's going to cut about 2% of Unisem's annual production. Not a lot over the year, but it is a lot in one quarter. So 
And these, they also say we anticipate that sales and production at our EPO plants that's in uh, North Malaysia will continue to be adversely impacted in the coming months due to headcount limitations because of the pandemic. So perhaps September numbers will be more on the lower end of what we are expecting. Um, Simon is asking, what's your reasoning to buy NEO instead of just piling it into Tesla? It's a very good question. I, I, they are obviously very closely correlated. So if you just want to buy Tesla, I think there's nothing wrong with that at all. Um, almost buying both together, there is a definite overlap there. Now, NEO is a Chinese company that is going to do very well in China. Tesla also does well in China, but NEO is that sort of premium Chinese brand and it really is the first premium Chinese brand so I think they are going to basically uh, dig away a very substantial part of the market share of BMW, Mercedes and Audi in China who uh, sell about 800,000 cars each per year at very high price points so whereas Tesla is quite frankly pricing more at a sort of Toyota price level. And this is no insult to Tesla. That's their, that's their plan, right? So it's a different positioning, one being a very premium brand that likely have higher margins, uh, but less sales. And then Tesla, you're going to have lower margins likely and just much, much more volume. So it's a, just, it's a different positioning. I, I, I think that's really the, the main differential differentiator there. And then there are smaller differences like battery as a service and those kind of things, but we don't really need to get into that. But I don't think at this point they compete head to head. I, I don't really see it. They might in the future, but at the moment, both are essentially competing with ICEs. I mean, the, you know, the market share pie is just growing so much. That's a very, very nice lead into Tesla. So Tesla's confirmed they're going to put out a Model 2. I don't know why I wrote Model S. Um, that is uh, an error. Uh, Model 2 in 2023 for $25,000. And that's going to be made, guess where, in Shanghai. So it's going to be China-made, and it's going to be exported around the world, including to the US. Uh, why is that? Because manufacturing in China is cheaper. You are closer to the supply chain. That's one of the big advantages uh, there. And we are already seeing that with most of the Teslas sold in Europe. They are made in China and consumers don't seem to mind. So that's a really interesting one. Now, is that going to happen in 2023? Possibly it'll be um, it'll be delayed a little bit to 2024. But, you know, who knows? Elon is always a little bit bullish. We also have a Neo RoboTaxi news. And Eric, I just saw your thoughts there on Neo Palantir TA. We will definitely do that. I'm going to write that down over here. PLTR. So this is TA standing for technical analysis. That's me looking at the chart and telling you what the indicators say. So near RoboTaxi, I will also put out a more detailed video on that later today. But Mobileye is a company that is owned by Intel. And they used to be the sort of sensor supplier, camera supplier to Tesla until they fell out acrimoniously, I think in 2016, over a, a car crash in Florida. And they have just launched a robotaxi a service a trial in Israel with Neo ES8s. And they're also taking those to Munich. So they have licensed or certified the Neo ES8 to self drive in Munich, uh, up to 80 miles per hour, that's speed. Um, they still need to have a driver sitting there who's going to have the most boring job in the world, doing nothing. Or just looking at the world, uh, I suppose. But yeah, so uh, that's a German law passed in May. That, that's now uh, permitted. And that's kind of an interesting one. So they are basically taking on Tesla in a sense here. That's the plan. Intel is, is, is behind this. So there are lots of funding behind this. They can certainly get their hands on chips, I would have thought as well. And it's a really interesting one that they're doing this with NEO. So it's a great partnership, I think. And I think it's going to be very beneficial to NEO as well to have them driving around um, from, a, from a marketing point of view and also from a data and sort of partnership point of view. So I think that is definitely good news. Now let's see if the job opening numbers are out just. Let me just hit refresh here. They're meant to come out 18 minutes ago, but they're not out yet. Okay, I'll tell you when they are. So then let's let's move on to SEC. The SEC has sued Coinbase. Here it is. Um, because they intend to see Coinbase over the product called Coinbase Lend. They have disclosed Coinbase down 3%. Uh, 
Um, they were caught off guard by this because um, they've been talking to the SEC for six months, uh, but the SEC refused to meet them apparently. So the SEC getting a little bit um, strange here on on uh, on crypto, and then says we're committing to following the law. Sometimes the law is unclear, so the SEC wants to publish guidance. We are happy to follow that, says Armstrong here. So. They don't seem to like each other very much. The product is apparently allows users to earn a 4% yield on stablecoin, the US dollar coin, by allowing Coinbase to lend those funds to borrowers. So it's what's happening on every crypto exchange, essentially, and the SEC not happy about that. It seems a bit of a strange one, but we were expecting a bit of a regulatory regulatory crackdown here on on on, on those exchanges like like coinbase etc uh, tesla has had really brilliant car sales numbers in china in august uh, in july you might remember they were really disappointing 8600 so they're 12800 that should be uh, good for the stock let's have a quick look here at tesla Tesla up 1% pre-market, so uh, that kind of makes sense uh, if you're feeding such a positive story into the market in the morning. PayPal also doing pretty well. Let me see where PayPal is sitting up to almost 2% pre-market uh, because they've bought a Chinese, sorry, a Japanese buy now pay later lender called uh, PayD for 2.7 billion. That's a pretty sizable acquisition. So PayPal is getting a bit more aggressive in its acquisitions here of late. Um, I'm still waiting to see which brokerage platform they're going to snap up. And then if you watched my interview yesterday, sadly not mine, but the one I was live streaming on Alex Karp, if you didn't see that, you missed out. Just type Alex Karp interview into YouTube and you find it. It's this one here. Uh, I'm literally the only YouTube channel who put that out. I don't know why. It was hosted in German, in Germany. And he speaks excellent German. He really does. It is dubbed, but it's super interesting because it's a real kind of, um, almost sort of a fly on the wall kind of a conversation. You sort of feel like you're, you're, you're intruding on someone's private chat, but very interesting. And one of the key things he said is that we have three new products uh, to launch. And that surprised me because I kind of hadn't thought of that. I know that they keep tweaking and keep adding to the pile that sits in Foundry, but this surprises me. And do I know what they are? Absolutely no idea. So I could make a video on this and, and pretend that I know something about it, but I really don't. And I don't think anybody does, but there's going to be a lot of speculation out there. And you know, the easiest way to grow as a company, typically, is to launch new products. So that's why, you know, when you go to your cereal aisle and you, you pick up a Kellogg's box, you'll see another like 30 next to it because that's how you get more, more market share, more depth. So be super interesting to see what that is. Glenn says, hit that like button. I would truly appreciate if you can get those likes uh, crawling up towards 100. And then let's have a look at the market here and we'll have a look at the charts as well. Uh, pre-market. Now, if you want to do technical analysis yourself, I teach it to you. I teach that in the Master Stocks course together with teaching you how to build long-term wealth from stock investing. That's really it in a nutshell. So if you want to really grow a long-term portfolio that's going to make you very wealthy and very comfortable and make you sleep well at night, uh, check it out. If you want to trade more frequently and build a passive income, instead from trading, or not instead, but perhaps in addition, which is what I would recommend, then uh, check out the Master Options course and learn how to options trade. I break it down for you into little snippets and little lessons that you can learn. And of course, there is a lovely community with it uh, where you can ask me and the community questions. So take advantage of that study buddy coupon until the end of the week. And your study buddy will also get free lifetime access. So you can nominate somebody to get free access to the same course and you can do it together. It's more fun, but actually it's also just much more effective. People learn much better uh, on that. Um, Blake's asking about SFTW. We can look at that in a second. Uh, we looked at that, I think, on Saturday, right, Blake? Quite in depth and it's done really quite well. One of the key things with that is, if you looked on the Discord here, uh, Black Sky was awarded a five-year, 30 million NGA contract. So we're going to have a look at that in a second. Uh, so that's obviously very good news for them. Uh, this is sort of a Palantir 
backed SPAC that's about to merge. So definitely, thanks for throwing that out, Blake. We'll have a look at that. I'll add it here to the SFTW list of stocks that we will uh, look at. Um, Eric is asking, what are your thoughts on Cardano? I, I do have a little bit and it's gone up tremendously, which I'm happy about. Uh, I am... I, um, I think to be perfectly honest, for me, the whole crypto investment is FOMO investment completely. Uh, I just wanted to be a little bit a part of it. And it's been quite a ride up and down. I think some of these coins will do tremendously well because there is going to be a real usability factor there. And Candano is possibly one of those. Which one it is, I, I really haven't got the, the, the magic uh, looking glass there. So uh, I just invested a little bit into a bunch of them and a little bit more into Ethereum and a little bit more than that into, into Bitcoin. And uh, I'm just sort of sitting on it and just waiting. So I, I'm not your super active crypto investor there, but I, I do think it's a really interesting space. Um, and just by having a bit in it, uh, you become more interested and you follow it. And I think that's always a good thing to do. Like if you have a company you find kind of re really curious, really interesting, just buy one share and, and it'll make you a lot more interesting. We're interested when you follow it. So NEO has actually had, as you can see here, a really nice run here, four days up. Uh, we are breaking out quite nicely. If you watched my TA over the weekend, I was saying that I was worried about the volume falling off because when your stock price goes up and your volume goes down at the same time, it tells you we're fizzling out typically. Now, yesterday we went up another half a percent on bigger volume. So that's good news. Now, this is about to get turned around, though, because we have this dilution and I kind of don't think we're going to go down 3%. It wouldn't really make sense because as I say, they're getting cash for that, right? So it sort of offsets each other in, in, in a way, but I, I do think we are going to go down a bit today. Um, how much? That's a very good question. Uh, you, we do have some support at sort of 39.80 or so from yesterday, or actually $40 also from yesterday. So uh, it'd be lovely if we could hold $40 at the end of the day. That would be really nice. Otherwise, I would sort of say $39.80 or $39, somewhere in that range. I don't think it matters all that much. I think it's just a bit of a small one uh, here. Um, uh, Philip is, uh, is, uh, is, is damning YouTube. I'm not quite sure why. Uh, maybe you missed one of my videos, Philip. You're tearing your hair out. It's terrible, I know, when you miss one of my videos. But <laughs> you, even if you turn the alert belts on, you don't get recommended every video. So that the algorithm is a funny beast. So do always check out in because I'm putting out quite a lot of videos. Like today, I think there are four videos out today or coming out today. So you probably only get recommended two of them perhaps if you are uh, subscribed and, and you um, you turn the little alert belts on. By the way, I really appreciate the subscriber numbers. We are this close to 25,000, which surely deserves a celebration. So uh, if you want to be those last few people who will uh, change the scales towards 25,000, I would truly, truly appreciate you uh, as I do everyone who's joining. And Palantir is, continues to fly. I mean, this is really looking such a, like such a happy chart of late. It's almost like, you know, Palantir has done some therapy and it's really worked. So we jumped out of this green corridor down here, pre-earnings into the pink corridor up here, um, into the sort of $25 plus range. And now we're at 2670 pre-market down a bit, 2650, but it doesn't make that much difference really. Now there are two points that are resistance points for us. One is this high of yesterday and three days ago at about 2680 something, 2688 or 2686. And then there is another one up here. Let me get a great big fat arrow. Uh, that one up there at 27.50, that's the previous rally. So those are the points that we need to kind of break through to really keep this rally going. Um, so expect a bit of resistance at these two points, 26.80 and 27.50. But essentially, if you look at momentum, for example, uh, things are looking still very, very positive. So this here, the green line I've just put in here is the momentum zero point. So if you're above it, you have positive momentum. If you're below it, you have negative momentum. And we are very, very, very nicely above it. We had sort of two points, basically at two. So I'm still very happy with that chart. 
Uh, CH says the YouTube algo is like Joe Biden's mental faculty. Okay, I shan't comment on that from a political point of view, but it's it's basically designed to show you whatever you are likely to watch the longest. And I don't know, maybe they think you couldn't possibly watch me uh, two or three times a day. And therefore they think it's just too much, Felix. We're not going to recommend it. Uh, but you can do something about that when you watch stuff. Just hit that like button and it just sends that little signal to the algorithm. Hey, this is good content. Show it to more people. Um, um, Noah, uh, thanks for joining. You're worried about the daily momentum. It's gone down to 131. Okay, I still have it at um, at about 180. Um, it might go down a little bit more, but no, essentially, as long as it's positive, I'm pretty happy about it. Um, now, you don't want to see a sort of sharp fall either, but bobbing sideways in a positive range is a pretty good thing. Um, Joan is asking about my skin. I do absolutely nothing to my skin whatsoever, but I'm considering a skincare channel because you're not the first who asked, <laughs> but I appreciate it. Uh, literally, um, soap and a couple of showers a day. Uh, that's pretty much it. Um, let me see if there are any questions here. Miss the start if the... Da, da, da. Please give us your opinion. Oh, Philip, you didn't get an announcement. Oh, okay, for this for this video. Okay, that is indeed tragic. Well, you could, you could watch it back uh, or um, I'll do a quick recap as well at some of the key stuff here. The... Has the time zone changed to the US or something? I don't know why my... my um, Job opening numbers here are, are, are late. Um, I'm not exactly sure. Okay, market overall, let's have a quick look here. Everything is down ever so slightly. 0.1% uh, ish for all three markets. Uh, nothing major. VIX up a little bit, 3%, but still below 20. That's still pretty um, low. Can you see that here where we are? So nothing to worry about. You sort of start getting itchy when it goes above 30. And, and what does it actually mean, VIX? Take that number, divide it by 12, and then you have the volatility for the next month, essentially. Um, okay, you guys are talking about vitamins, which is great. Um, <laughs> um, and... Okay, let's let's uh, do a quick recap here for anyone who's literally just joined us here. So uh, NIO is issuing 2 billion shares at the market. Uh, and I think some people misinterpret that to mean that they're not issuing new shares. They are issuing new shares. It's dilutive. But if you think about it, they are collecting $2 billion. So you're going to own a little bit less of NIO, but NIO will have more assets. So the two kind of offset each other, unless you think that NIO is just going to you know, go on a spending spree and, uh, and and completely waste that money, which I don't think they're going to do. They're going to pile it up and they're going to invest it into expansion and models and so on. And to some extent, also just financial security, right? So um, CH says, do you see a correlation between meme stocks and crypto? I looked at that for a while, CH. I don't think there's a strong correlation. No, I, I personally don't see it. Um, there is a little bit in a sense when there is sort of this exuberance when something like AMC goes up, you know, 10 times, people are excited. They might take a bit of that money, put it into crypto and so on. But I, I don't think uh, there really is a clear correlation between uh, the two. Um, uh, Desmond, good evening to you. Uh, you are in Hong Kong, I know. Uh, thanks for tuning in and thanks for the for the comment on the Palantir video. I suspect you mean the Palantir, the Alex Karp interview. Uh, and if you haven't watched that, the YouTube algo didn't, didn't recommend this to very many people. Uh, check it out. It's literally the only version, the only video on YouTube of this interview uh, out yesterday. It's in German, but it's dubbed. So it's, it's, it's super interesting. I think it's very interesting, uh, that conversation he had with the CEO of Deutsche Telekom, the um, uh, now owner of T-Mobile. So um, markets just opened. Shall we have a quick look? Shall we have a quick peek at what's going on here? So what's flying? Tesla uh, going up on good news that they are China sales numbers are up very substantially. SoFi up, PayPal up. Generally speaking, okay, Apple up. And now what's, what's hurting? Coin, because they're getting sued by the SEC and they don't really know why <laughs> over, over their lending product. And then Neo down 3%. So that's basically people's idea that the dilution um, destroys value by 3%. I, 
don't think it really does that, to be honest with you, because they're raising money at a decent share price at 40 bucks, essentially, or, or, or whatever. Um, they can do this over a time period. They don't have to sell them all in one go. Um, and they're going to take that money and presumably they're going to reinvest it and they're going to give us higher returns than the cash value. So I, I'm I, I don't have a big problem with that. Palantir down 1% here. Really not sure why. I think this is just a bit of market sentiment. And education stocks down. That makes sense. They've just had the Chinese education stocks. The remaining business they still have basically price capped. So uh, not a good place to be. QQQ overall is down just a little bit here. So uh, a few, few positive breakouts. Um, the IV, it's uh, Eric. It's calculated, not by somebody behind. No, it's it's an automated thing. Um, it, it's an automated thing. Um, are you are you on the options course, Eric? I, then I think there is a nice big lecture on that. Otherwise, I might send you a link on the Discord after. Shoot, shoot me an email. Um, speaking of options, I, I have a about an eighty lecture options course, which takes you from zero to hero. So really, the purpose of options is to earn passive income with trading, which is much much better than trading stocks because. You have like trades that have sort of 70, 80% probability and you can cap your downside. And you can also make money out of things going up or down, go or sideways or, or in any which direction. So there's a huge advantage there to opt from options trading over stock trading. Um, Desmond says, as long as William Lee isn't buying NFTs uh, with the funds, uh, you, you, think, you think it's going to be all right. Or, you know, a, a fleet of neo yachts or something. And I, I very much doubt that. I think... Really, you need to be raising money as a company when you don't need it. That's really the whole the whole point here. And we uh, talked about this quite a bit, and I posted on the Discord earlier. Uh, you know, the the channel of the previous dilutions and how that really didn't have any impact on the stock price. So I think in the long run, this doesn't really have much of an impact. Um, by the way, if you are not on the Discord, you can get there through the Patreon. It's 50 cents a day because that seems to be the sweet spot where people are engaged and invested and read and join and contribute. Um, and it's basically prevents it from turning into a, a, a subreddit, uh, which is not the intention here. It's a bit more um, kind of in-depth and a bit more uh, research-based than that. So uh, check it out if you want to join us there. And, and speaking of what Nicholas posted here on Black Sky, so Black Sky, we talked about this on Saturday, is uh, a, a brilliant geospatial intelligence company. They're basically putting lots of satellites into the orbit and you can access live satellite data for a tenth of the price and uh, at three times the speed. So in about half an hour, you can get your hands on that. And they're using Foundry, but Palantir is also an investor. And they've just gotten a multi-year indefinite delivery, indefinite quantity contract by the National Geospatial Intelligence Agency, which I had never heard of. I, I presume it's some sort of US intelligence agency. And it's going to be 30 million bucks. So it's just, you know, they're following sort of down the, the Palantir route in a sense here, you know, picking up those government contracts. And of course, it's a massive endorsement because uh, those guys want the best data, the fastest level. And they're saying we're honored to be selected by the NEG, NGA by employ uh, to advance its geo int mission by employing innovative AI solutions to automate the delivery of timely insights, says their CEO. Um, and the award highlights the increasing need for automated and real-time geospatial intelligence. And this, by the way, isn't just for the military. Uh, it's a SaaS application. Any Palantir customer can just log into it. They can access it. It's just part of Foundry. You can click into it. And if you're an insurer or if you're a big logistics company or you're a miner or you know many other industries, uh, live or near live satellite imagery is, is very, very useful. Um, and Desmond is, is giggling with me on the National Geospatial Intelligence Agency. Yeah, I, I'd never heard of that. I didn't know what that was, to be honest with you. Uh, but it's obviously a thing. Um, uh, Noah says we dropped three percent on no news. Uh, are you talking about Neo? Um, I, I, in, in which case, it's the dilution. Um, and Palantir. He says Palantir. Hang on, hang on, hang on. Um, yeah, Palantir is down. You're right, two point eight percent. Let's see what it is live here on absolutely no news at all. You are quite right. Um, 
2.97% down. Big chunk of uh, insider selling, maybe? I don't know. I haven't seen any announcements yet in my mailbox. Let me have a quick look. If there is one. Mm, no, not so far. So no, but uh, maybe we'll see it tomorrow. Who, who knows? But yeah, on no news, it's a little unusual to drop 3%. Uh, 25.88 we are right now. Let's have a look at that from a chart point of view. So our next support is essentially at 2578. Let me put that in here as a line and also as a as a flag. So that's sort of the next support line, which is basically the um, the opening from the 31st of August. Um, and we are we are moving a little bit upwards again, though. People are people are buying the dip. It's probably you know, isn't it? Nowhere is moving the market again. Uh, Philip is saying uh, euros got smashed today, so it might be a global fear. I mean, as you say, the futures are all down a little bit here, but not tremendously. Um, and the job numbers still aren't out, so it's not that either. It does seem a little bit irrational for, for things to move 3%. But, you know, the market is very irrational in the short term. And that's where there's a lot of money to be made in the short term. But we are seeing quite a lot of things. x banks down 5%. NEO down now 4.2%. So this is just that typical early morning kind of crazy uh, over excitement when people just overdo stuff. And um, also bear in mind, a lot of people have stop loss orders. So maybe people had stop loss orders at $26 and then they all get triggered at the same time and then everybody sells off and then everybody wakes up, sees the notification and they buy back in. Um, oh, uh, European stock exchanges, th thank you. Uh, Mohammed is saying that Neo ES8 received a five-star safety rating from the European NCAP, which is very good news. Thank you for, for sharing that, Mohammed. Uh, that is definitely a good news story here. Now, there was another stock you asked me to look at. Oh, yeah, SFTW. Uh, let's do that. Don't be shy to ask questions. And uh, we can take a look at some other stocks that you want to look at, though I would highly recommend that you learn some technical analysis yourself. So good day yesterday, 5.8% up, uh, perhaps because we talked about this on Saturday. Uh, we did a Palantir special and we talked quite a bit about uh, this uh, stock here. So today, a bit of profit taking here, 1.6%. Uh, uh, but essentially, yeah, people are getting excited about this. Uh, at 10 bucks, I, I still think it's a reasonable price point. That's sort of essentially, uh, you know, nominal value here. Uh, bear in mind, though, that they are not going to make money for quite some years, right? This is very much future, future tech. Uh, they're getting some really good contracts, which is a good sign of endorsement, I think, for what they're doing. But there is, of course, with these early startup type companies, always a risk they might go out of business, though I, I, I do rather like this. I, I, I do rather like this one. So uh, today, just down 1.6%. Let's see if it touches back down towards $10. Oh, Desmond saying it's um, my, my earnings are at... Um, uh, sorry, my job openings numbers are at 10 p.m. Um, has um, uh, has there been one of those um, uh, time zone change things, summertime over or something like that? I didn't realize them. Neo is now down. Let's pull up Neo. Four point five percent on the live. It's four point. 3%. So it's 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 improving a little bit here. Yeah, but it's the market always re overreacts with these things, right? Um it, it it really always does. So it's it's just not, you know, that's in a sense where the opportunities are. And that's also one of the reasons I, I teach a lot of market psychology and in trader and investor psychology, also so we can understand our own psychology and we can take advantage of fear moments. Really, fear moments are the greatest to buy things at. Uh, Nathan is asking, what's your double your income course about? So that's not about stock investing. It's about starting a side hustle to sell and start a business that is very, very much automated. It won't take that much of your time. Um, it's a lot focused on selling digital products, uh, but you can also apply it to physical products. So it's essentially teaching you how to set up from scratch a system and, and how to pick 
a business idea, even if you haven't got one, I give you a list and tell you which ones are good and not. So it's more taking you into an entrepreneurial space uh, because I want to get people out of this being employed and dependent on one revenue stream. You want to have at least two revenue streams and you might also somewhere down the road decide to perhaps quit the day job and just focus on building those revenue streams. And you might also want to keep both. But if you have it, it just means you can invest a little bit more money into the stock market and a little bit more money into the stock market means you're financially independent because you can make a ton of money by um, um, putting just a little bit into the market. So um, now you've got me, you got me going, um, Nathan, for a few minutes. I apologize. I'm going to have to show you this. So on my website, if you go on there, go to academy.org, if you click on free tools, uh, say you're saving $360 a month and you're not saving it, but you're investing it and you're going to get 11% return. And you should get 11% because the S&P gets 14% over the last 10 years. And you could do better than the S&P 500 because you could pick some better stocks. And of course, again, I'll be happy to give you some guidance on that. You calculate that. And it means you are saving $130,000 and you are getting $880,000 back just from having invested. So you get a million bucks from $360 a month. So if you can set up just the tiniest of side businesses that gives you an extra $360, that's a million dollars. So that's why I love this. And say say you got 14%. Say you got what the S&P 500 has gotten. That would be $2 million. So setting up a small side business that makes you $360 US dollars a month could make you $2 million yeah, over a fairly long time period. But that's the difference between uh, living so-so or living very comfortably if, you know, when you are, if, you, if you wish to stop working. So uh, financial security is such a key thing and having that extra income stream is really what that's all about. So sorry for the, the lengthy explanation there, but you can check that out. If you go on um, products on my website, there is a course there called Double Your Income in 14 Days. Um, are you going to do it in 14 days? You, you, you might not. You may. You could. Uh, I've certainly done it in 14 days. But in, it, the whole process is really to teach you how to build something from scratch with no idea, no idea what you want to do, no business, no thoughts, no experience. And I'll take you there from, from zero to hero. So uh, let's go back to the market here. Uh, Nathan, do you need to develop your own product? You don't need to develop a physical product. Uh, I would very much encourage people, and I do on the course, to de develop a, a um, digital product. So that could be at the beginning, you providing a service, and then we're going to go through it together to package that service into a product that you can sell. Uh, and that's really the, uh, the, the, the most advantageous way of doing it, I, I think. Um, Oh, no, uh, so this is all about the, 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 the debt limit nonsense. So basically, the US, every couple of years, they reach their debt ceiling and then Congress, you know, goes nuts. And then if we, they reach the debt limit and there's no agreement, the f government stops paying people, everybody freaks out, and then they raise it. And that's what's going to happen here again. Uh, so that might have something to do that, yes. Um. Glenn is saying Neo is acting like the dilution has already happened. Well, that is actually rational, Glenn, because the market knows it. And when the market knows it, it's priced in. So it's pricing it in, but it's pricing it in like double, uh, basically. Um, build, rinse, repeat. Uh, <laughs> absolutely. Uh, that's exactly the plan with the side hustles. Um, uh, Nathan, you could just check it out. Check out the program. It's completely risk-free. If it isn't for you, you, you get your money back. So um, there's no, no harm in it. Uh, and the same coupon applies here, this one, study buddy. Uh, similarly, you can also bundle the courses together and, and you save an extra 100 bucks. Uh, and Michael is basically saying that the uh, people in charge, so to speak, um, Yellen, Powell, Biden, etc. believe in this modern monetary theory. And what is that all about? It basically means you think you can just keep printing money. The government can keep issuing debt. The central bank buys the government debt with the new money it's printed. It's a happy circle and everyone's happy and nobody has to face reality and debt no longer has to be paid back. It's a strange place to be in, but that seems to be where we are living at the moment. So yeah, I, I do think also think that's going to continue. And you know what? That means 
asset inflation is going to continue to go through the roof. Forget these headline figures of 4 or 5% inflation. That's nothing. Look at the stock market, 18% up or so since the beginning of the year. That's asset inflation. So if you had $100 at the beginning of the year and you haven't invested it, well, it's worth less because you can no longer buy the S&P 500. You have to pay 18% more in just eight, eight months. So that's where the inflation lies. And that's what's going to cause the rift between those who have assets and those who don't have assets. So put money into assets. And if you want to make some more money to put more money into assets, I highly encourage that. Um, just, you know, do do a little side hustle as we were just talking about. Just uh, literally a couple of hundred dollars a month make all the difference in the world if you can invest that money and if you can invest it every single month you will be much much better off so yeah the market definitely going a little bit nuts here um on 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 those stocks also i don't know why palantir is down three percent there isn't really anything particular here going on i mean is there a fear that this the federal government is going to stop paying palantir well, in theory, for a couple of weeks, uh, remember in the sort of Clinton era, they were shut down for quite a while, right? But I think they're going to agree. Um, Michael says it's going to be like the Weimar Republic, which was the uh, German Republic before uh, um, you know, the uh, Nazis took over. I don't think it's necessarily that extreme, Michael. Look at Japan. They've been doing this for like 20 years. And and it's it's a beautiful country. It's very well run, and and it works. And it's a strange, it's very strange economic world to be in for someone who studied economics like me as an economist. I sort of scratch my head because this is not what we were taught. We were taught the opposite. But um, they, they have. I am also of the view, I kind of think you need to let the market crash every once in a while. You need to have those bankruptcies. You need to clear out the stuff that's rubbish and then let the uh, great companies thrive, which is why I am such a fan of picking just the really good stocks and not buying big indices because they are full of bloated companies that shouldn't really be there. Um, uh, Gary is saying Palantir was on a... Uh, was uh, due for a pullback. Uh, yeah, it, it has been on a really good run. You are right. And as long as we are sticking in this sort of, what I put in here, this purple path uh, corridor, you know, we are now kind of in the middle of it at sort of 25, 80 or so. Uh, I, I think that's completely fine. You know, as long as we stick above our $25, I, I am not concerned. So, um, uh, and Desmond, yeah, Ray Dalio, I, I, I am kind of with him on that. I think... Um, you can't just delay the reset forever. But you know what? Politicians get elected. Who wants to be the president that crashed the economy? Nobody. They just think, keep kick the can down the road four more years, pile up some more debt, uh, keep interest rates at zero or, or negative in real terms, and that way nobody has to pay for it here. So, um, How can you add Palantir to your option strategy? Um, well, if you understand options trading, then you can simply trade options on, on, on Palantir. Uh, just make sure you check before that there is enough volume and, and enough demand at the price points that you're going in there for. And, um, and always check um, I, the I, IV. Um, that, that's really, really the, the, the key thing there. Uh, Yon Chu is asking, is gold ETF... A decent hedge against the crash. Well, let's pull it up. So we want the... Hang on. <laughs> Hard to find them sometimes. Gold, gold, gold listed in Israel. We kind of want one that's listed in the U.S., Okay, I'm just going to pull up the SPDR Gold Trust that'll sort of do the do the do the job, and then we're going to compare this against, say, QQQ um, on a different price scale, and I'll get rid of my other my my hundred day moving average line here. And what we're going to do? We're going to go just go back. We're going to look at the last crash because that was really you know fairly recently, March 2020. So. This here, where I'm pointing at green, great big green arrow, was the crash. Now in orange, I've got QQQ, 
and in, in red and green, I've got the gold price uh, and the gold ETF. And you see in that particular crash, they both went down together. Um, sorry, that's March 2021. I, I'm sorry. Uh, that's the wrong year. Uh, that's why that didn't make any sense. So let's go back a little bit more. 2020. Okay, so let's try to get them both on here at a reasonable scale. So you can see they have essentially, again, we put a little arrow in here. So this is actually the COVID crash here. In orange, it's the, um, this one down here is the QQQ. So that did that fairly dramatic move. Gold also went down sort of surprisingly uh, at the same time, and then it rallied back up. Um, but it hasn't really outperformed the market. Uh, it, it wasn't really a great hedge. It kind of moved fairly similarly. So I, I think, I don't really know why that is. I only have a little bit of gold, but I, I don't think it's the greatest hedge in the world, to be honest with you. And so th that's sort of my, my thought on that. Um, you bought some gold today? What's the gold price today? Is it is it Because it went down quite a bit in, in August, right? Gold by the ounce, uh, 1787. So yeah, it's it's had a fairly volatile ride. It didn't have a very good August. And this is where, where Palantir bought, which is a rather smart place to buy. But we are down a little bit again here to, to 1780. I think to me personally, Desmond, gold is more of a end of the world sort of hedge. Say the banking system stops working even if it's just for a week or two because of some sort of, uh, you know, great big crash or hack in the internet system or something like that. Say you can cannot access digital payments, then having a little bit of it, um, and I'm going to sound like somebody who, who digs in his, his backyard quite a lot. I don't have a backyard, otherwise I probably would. <laughs> but um, it's I, I think it, it might actually make sense to have a little bit so that in that position, you have something that you can exchange for whatever you need. So, um, and it's very shiny. I have a little piece always on my desk for for good luck. It's it's a small little. It doesn't really recognize this because this is a very shiny. Uh, does it zoom in on this? No, not really. Right, sorry, it doesn't show properly. But th there you can see it. These are these little little um, kind of nuggets uh, that are very popular in in Hong Kong. So. Um, um, so, Desmond, I think I think most people in Hong Kong have a little, have a bit of gold, right? It, it seems to be kind of ingrained, and I think it's a little bit, if you don't mind me saying it, the sort of refugee mentality, because you know a lot of people arrived in Hong Kong as refugees in the '60s, uh, so they kind of think, well, you need to have something you can take with you if you know something hits the fan, and and, and I think that's really the um, the sort of thought thought process with that. It's just a I think as a small bit of a hedge, it's a it's a reasonable thing to do. I wouldn't put all my money into it, but um, Neo now down five point three percent. So, but the whole market is just uh, being um, being pretty irrational here. Let's have a look at what the big headlines are uh, that are freaking out the world. So CNBC always very good at freaking people out. Um, ECB to ECB, ECB to kick off its tapering debate. Um, okay, so that's one of it for sure. People don't like that at all. Um, that might have quite a lot to do with it. Uh, let's pull up as well uh, Bloomberg here for a second. I'll just put them over here and just see what they've got to say in just a moment. Okay, they're not saying anything. They just um, are showing showing pictures of basically what we are looking at here. So uh, we're not missing out on anything there. Dow Jones index, however, has just turned ever so slightly into the green, which is good to see. Um, uh, Philip says, your father and grand brother have loaded up on actual gold bars. Don't trust the system. You know, I, I, I do think there is a, a some sense in that. I mean, given what we've all kind of experienced here the last, you know, 15 months or so, that 
is not something we would have predicted, right? That the whole world at the same time essentially shuts down. That's pretty unprecedented. And then uh, for those of us who are based in Hong Kong here, I know there are a few of us here, uh, you know, the previous year or so we had massive unrests here as well. Again, not something you would have expected in a, a very, very safe place that we normally live in. So you look at those kind of things and you just sort of think, hey, maybe those guys talking, you know, about, about doom and gloom and prepping and that kind of stuff are not as crazy. And so I think there are some basic precautions we, which we can take, which don't cost us a lot, don't really add much risk to our situation. And I would just prepare us for those things a little bit better. Um, Philip says, Tesla is the only thing green in your portfolio. Um, yeah, let me see. There isn't a great deal. Even PayPal's turned red. Uh, so yeah, Netflix, Amazon are up a little bit. Tesla are up only 0.2% from a, a very uh, happy start to the morning. So this is probably a really great day to buy some stocks because, uh, you know, when everyone's freaking out, that's a good time to buy some things. I wouldn't buy uh, Chinese education stocks. I would stay away from it as far as you possibly can. Uh, but there are definitely some decent stocks here uh, that are on sale for no particular reason other than that people are uh, freaking out a little bit. Probably more tapering thoughts. If Europe's going to do it, maybe America is going to do it as well. Uh, Amazon is indeed green. Um, Brian is saying, uh, does Joby have a future? Okay, let's pull up the Joby chart here. Joby Aviation. So they've come crashing down quite substantially. But these are these sort of fairly erratic spikes we're seeing in the SPACs, right? So they're back down to 10 bucks, essentially, um, you know, where they were. Uh, how well are they funded? I suppose that's really the question here. They partnered with NASA to launch electric aircraft and so on. I, 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 for me, I like the whole sector. Uh, I, I personally wouldn't bet on one single company because some of these will just go out of business. So I, I would perhaps pick a couple of these that look good and have good partnerships, are well-funded, have good management, uh, and, and, and just sort of um, nibble at them uh, over time for, for, for the long haul. Uh, and Desmond, I'm with you. Buying Chinese education stocks is like giving money to charity. Uh, They've lost 85% of their core business. That's basically been outlawed. And now the remaining business has a price cap on it. So this is really like, uh, I, I don't really know what, what the, would be the equivalent. Say you buy an apartment and they say you can't get 85% of your rent. We're going to take it. And on the other 15%, they put rent control in. Uh, you know, would you buy that apartment? No, of course not. Not so. I, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't touch it. It just doesn't make any sense at all. We still haven't got the jobs opening numbers out. Oh, no, we do. We do, we do. Okay, they are higher than expected. So this is sort of what we were expecting, that there are actually job openings out. So people just don't want to take them, or they're in the wrong place, or they are not qualified for them, or, you know, who knows. Um, so that... What does that mean for our tapering? It actually means tapering is more likely. So it means that the Fed could slow things down a little bit because the economy is actually improving. The problem is quite possibly that people are not willing or to go to work or there's some sort of structural problem. It's in the wrong place or those employment benefits which have just expired, ironically, on Labor Day, uh, where holding people back from actually taking up work or Perhaps with COVID, people are worried about going to, to work or they can't because their kids' kindergartens and schools are closed and, and those sort of type things. So, But from a growth investor uh, point of view, this is not a great number. Uh, we, we like high unemployment, as cynical as that sounds. Uh, that's the reality of the market. So this shows a, an improvement in the economy that isn't necessarily good for us. So that number just come out here three minutes ago, I believe. And I don't think the market's going to love that. Let me hit refresh on this. Okay, futures. Yeah, everything's down. NASDAQ's down 0.3% now. So, um, and economic optimism at the same time. Okay, that's another interesting number. Economic optimism is, is falling. So, that, in a sense, offsets the good news on the job openings. So we are back to square one with regards to tapering. So perhaps this news isn't, isn't, isn't that bad after all. 
Uh, Jan says, do you pay for Bloomberg Terminal? No, I don't. I used to work with one when I worked at an investment bank here in Hong Kong. I a good, but I don't think they're necessarily that good. The, the point really of them is that you are connected to every trader at every bank in the world. There is an index, so you can connect and message with everybody and you are, are therefore able to talk to your clients and colleagues. To me, that's one of the biggest points of it. Uh, in terms of news, I don't actually think what's coming out there is, is all that different to what we see in, in mainstream media or just on Bloomberg.com. I think that subscription or Reuters subscription would make more sense than, than the actual terminal uh, because there isn't really a huge benefit there uh, for you. Um, on that note, I really appreciate you joining in. Uh, it's been a real pleasure. It always is. I'll be live again tomorrow, Tuesdays to Saturdays, 9 a.m. New York time. Um, I, I think it is at least. <laughs> I'm, I'm based here in Hong Kong. I appreciate you joining. Um, if you want to learn more about the courses down below, always feel free to send me a message at Felix at Goat Academy. Essentially, in a nutshell, if you want to build long lasting wealth, stock investing, Master Stocks is for you. And if you are somebody who trades at least a couple of times a month and you want to build passive income from trading, do it with options. It's the smarter, lower risk strategy. Thank you very much for tuning in. Take a note of the coupon. It expires at the end of the week and see you on the next one.